In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create hazy atmospheric lighting, which can be used to create beautiful scenes and moody environments. But aside from its artistic purposes, knowing how to create atmosphere is actually really important in CG. Because in the real world, we see the effects of atmosphere all around us, in the mist, in the fog, and in the dust. In fact, it's rare to actually go a day without seeing some sort of air pollution, especially if you live in Shanghai. And in terms of art, the atmosphere can be used to your advantage, like it can help you to tell the story of your scene, guide the viewer to what's important, hint at the time of day, or just give your scene a unique mood. These sorts of effects weren't possible in Blender before, without some serious cheating. So for example, we've always had something called halo lighting, which would cast a beam of light, but it only affected the area being lit, and it didn't respond to other lights in the scene. And worst of all, it didn't work in cycles, so pretty limited. We also had a trick for fog using the compositor, but it had a host of problems, the biggest of which being that it didn't react with the light sources around it, thus resulting in flat, boring renders. But with the new volumetric rendering, which was recently added in Cycles, you can now do this. True, accurate, atmospheric effects that react with the lighting and environment just like it should. So, how do you do this? Well, it's really easy to do. In fact, just a couple of clicks. All you do is go to the world settings up here, and then down here, you've got something that says volume, which you've probably never used before because there hasn't been a use. But now you can click this and from the drop down, select volume scatter. This is what will give you the fog across the entire scene. Then you just turn down the density, which is the main value you'll be tampering with. Turn that down to about 0.1. I find that works very well for most scenes. Any higher and things can really start to disappear. And the biggest one you wanna turn on is homogeneous volume. So what that is, is it's gonna reduce your render times drastically. And you use that whenever the object you're applying the volume to, in this case, it's the entire world, is big. So it makes sense. Turn that on. And you also wanna set the color of your volume to be pure white so that it's not dim in any way. Then as you'll notice right here, volumes are not yet supported on GPU. So I'm gonna uh, change this to CPU. Let's give this a render now and see how this looks. And there you go. You can see we now have a fog across the whole scene. One big thing you'll notice is that there are a lot of what you call fireflies, these little bright spots. The reason for that is that mostly this feature is probably still in development, so they're working out a few kinks. But the easiest way to fix this is by clamping down on them. So you can use these clamp settings here. So I'm gonna use clamp indirect, and I'm gonna set that to three. The lower you set that to, the uh, more it will clamp down, but the more you'll lose the highlighted areas. So be careful with that. I find three works pretty well for this. Let's give this another render now, and you'll see the stark difference. Ta-da, no more fireflies. So this is the before, and this is the after. And that is, of course, just tweaking that clamp indirect value there. Now, there are a few other settings that you can adjust under here. You've got volume sampling. Now, contrary to uh, disbelief, the uh, step size and max steps will do absolutely nothing to change your render times or the look of the scene. The reason for that is this is the heterogeneous volume samplings. But of course, in our world settings, we're using the homogeneous volume which means that does not apply. Trust me, I've tried it, makes no difference. The only thing that will change is uh, you can use here, distance or equiangular sampling. Now I found from experience that uh, equiangular works best for outdoor scenes like this and distance works best for indoor scenes. Um, so you can change that, but really there's not much of a difference. I'm just gonna leave them as they are. Now, just for the sake of things, I'm gonna add in a couple of lamps just to show you uh, a little bit more of how the uh, this voluming can work. Cause currently we've just got one you know, spot lamp and there's not much of an effect here. So let me just add in a few colored lamps and you'll be able to see how, it, uh, how this uh, fog can really uh, change the look of the scene. 
So there you go, you can see uh, having some extra lights in it, you do have fog across the entire scene, which can create some really impressive results. But one thing I wanted to note is that if the lamp is actually visible to the camera, you'll get a lot of noise around it. You can see it looks really, really choppy there, and that's because the lamp is visible. So if at all possible, try to hide it off screen so that it's not actually uh, visible, and it will look a lot less noisy. So. Just for the sake of this tutorial, since it was advertised, I guess, in the thumbnail, uh, I want to create the look of a light streaming in through a window. So I'm going to take this cube here and just stretch it out to be, uh, you know, the length of a room like that. Then the camera, I'm just going to position it front and center right here. So I'm just going to make a very, very basic looking room. And I'm going to knock a hole in it for the window. So just two edge loops there, another one there. Let's move that across. Let's take that face, boom, destruction. All right, cool. So for the sun, to get some sunlight streaming in here, normally what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna use a sun lamp. Unfortunately though, the sun lamp is not yet supported for the volumetric rendering. So we're gonna to have to use the spot lamp instead. But what I like to do instead, in order to uh, keep the, uh, the look of a sun, because the sun has you know constant light, whereas a spot lamp will have it bright at the tip and then fade off as it goes on. So what you can do is if you go to the node editor and have a look at the lamp settings, you can add in a light fall off node and then grab the constant output and put that into the strength input there. Then I'm gonna set this to 300 and you'll now get something that looks pretty close to the sun, which is good. So now with this uh, lamp here added, I'm just gonna position it where I want the sunlight to be sort of streaming in. So that looks pretty good right there. And uh, let's see how this looks. And there you go, we got the light coming in through the window and that's pretty much it. So uh, one thing we can do though is, uh, is you can adjust the light bounces for the volume because you'll notice that right now it's sort of got a murky gray feeling to it and that's because the, the light that's bouncing off the walls here and all the walls is uh, actually uh, affecting the volume. So you're getting uh, sort of a fog everywhere really. So down here underneath the light paths, if you change the default value of volume from one to zero, you'll get not only a faster render, much faster, but you'll get a sort of a cleaner result. Now it will technically be less accurate and less realistic, but it might suit your scene if that's what you're going for. So I'm gonna set that to zero. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the density of the fog to 0.2, which I normally wouldn't do, but I wanna sort of exaggerate this foggy effect uh, just for this, uh, this scene. So let's give this another render now and let's see how this looks. And there you go, a stark difference between the one before. So this one's really bright, and of course this one is a lot darker and a lot more clearer. And you'll also notice the render time is about half what it was before. So that's how uh, adjusting the, uh, the volume bounces can really affect it. Um, now one final tip that I will leave you with, uh, because this, this streak of light here looks pretty boring, pretty uh, cookie cutter. So we can get some sort of interesting shadows and stuff coming through this very easily. And this is a little trick that I learned from uh, Chris Monsoon, who did a guest tutorial for Blender Guru many years ago. So this is what you do. You go, uh, you add a plane, subdivide it many times. Let's go uh, 30, no, 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 40, okay. And then uh, I'm just gonna grab this brush tool here and uh, I'm just gonna click sort of randomly across this place like this, you know, just sort of randomly punching in places like this. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna act as our shadow map. So now if I delete those vertices, you can see we now have a bunch of blocks. So. I'm gonna rotate that and I'm gonna position that where our spot lamp is. In fact, make it easier, we can check show cone and we'll know exactly where this should actually be. So if I move this, uh, if I move this down a little bit, let's increase the size of, the, make it size of the window. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, let's give this another render right now with that and let's see how that looks. So there you go, 
some nice beautiful shadows coming in giving a nice sort of streak effect through that window there uh, give the light some color increase the sampling and uh, you get that so that pretty much concludes the tutorial so go forth have some fun with it like uh, these guys did from the blender team this one's by Rob Garlington and uh, this one here by Rainant Martinez and uh, as you can see you can do some really cool stuff with it so have fun see you next time